Chris here. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you for helping us make our goal for a Changa and the Jade Obelisk issue number three. Well, basically issue number one through three. And we made our goal in six days, which was really nice to see. Um, Y'all came out and supported and got us where we needed to be. But it doesn't stop there. Um, we've got 23 days left and we want to give pe more people the opportunity to support what we're doing. Um, so if you've got friends, you've got families, you've got relatives, anybody that you think will be interested in this comic book series, please pass this information on to them. Uh, show them what we got. Um, tell them to take a look at what we're, what we're offering as rewards and, and give us a, some support. Right now we're sitting at 94 backers. Um, we're at $2,989. We're $11 from $3,000. Um, I'm hoping that while I'm doing this uh, little spiel here that somebody will go in and uh, be that 95th uh, pledgey and take us over the hump. But uh, who knows? But I just wanted to stop in here a little bit and talk to you guys a little bit about how this how this pro project began. Um, it began with the book Changa Safari, um, a book that I came up with an, the idea for when I first started writing. It was one of my three main ideas that I came up with um, about 11 years ago. Um, I finally sat down and started writing the series and all four books have been written and completed. And after the books were done, um, I had a desire to see this done as a comic book. Um, I wanted to see a comic book series. Now, um, when I was looking at thinking about doing that, I was like, well, how do I do this? I said, well, let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's go to somebody that we know that knows how to make good comic books. So that's why I got in contact with Jason Reeves. You know, he's the owner of 133 Art. He's produced some great stuff in the past. He's producing great stuff now. So I just went to Jason. I said, look, man, um, I'd like to make Changa Safari a um, comic book series. And he said, cool, uh, let me work on that. So he came back with a team. The first person he introduced me to was Mattel Illuminati, one of the artists that had worked on some of his other stuff. And of course, um, as we were talking about it, he said, hey, man, you know, Jason, uh, he said, a Robert Hurt we was talking about, Robert Jeffrey, if you guys don't know, and he wants in on this. And I'm like, well, cool, because I know Robert. Robert's a great writer, and I'd love to see what Robert would, could, would, could do with the stories, interpreting them for comic books. Plus, Robert and Mateo had worked together on other projects. So whenever you have two artists that have worked together and they know each other, there's a lot of good back and forth going on between the two of them. So it's a lot easier situation than taking something and developing it into um into a story. So I'm a, I'll am i be honest, when I first started looking at this, my in my mind was something like the old Conan comic books, because that's how I got introduced into Conan, reading the books that were published by Marvel. They had John Buscema doing the artwork. So that's what I was, you know, looking for in this process. But when I saw the artwork from Mateo, I stepped back a little bit because I was like, oh, this is not what I was envisioning. But this is really good because what he was doing was taking some, you know, taking some modern cues and elements and putting them into this and developing something that was going to be unique just for China. And that's what we wanted something. We want something unique. Another thing that changed through this process was the story changed a little bit. Not much, but, you know, I wrote this story 11 years ago and I could say that my head was in a different place when it came to certain things. But as we started going over the story, it gave me an opportunity to change some things. It gave me a, a chance to work with some people who had the same vision that I had and to get their opinions on, on some of the storytelling and some of the things that were going on. And I believe that the changes we made um, were changes for the better. And I think that it's, it's actually shown in the, in, the, in the performance of the other books. You know, we have, um, got them right here with me. We have the first issue, Changa Safari, which won the Glyph Awards for a best story. If you're not familiar with the Glyph Awards, um, the Glyphs have been around for um, over 20 years. Um, and they are given by Ekbok, which is the East Coast Black, um, let me get it right, <laughs> East Coast Black Age of Comics Convention. Um, the Ekbok people have been recognizing and, and representing Black indie comics for a long time, longer than anyone else has been paying attention to them. So to receive a Glyph Award for the first book of Changa was really, is really an honor. Um, it's really a testimony to the uh, hard work and the quality that's coming out of this whole series from Jason, from Robert, from Mateo, from Loris, from the whole team. And then we found out a few days ago that Changa Safari Book 2 has made the shortlist for 
the Fire Ignite Awards as Best Comic Team. Again, Robert, Mateo, team showing up again, um, taking this story and developing it at a high level, at a high quality level. And that's the same thing that you will get and that we expect to do with Changa issue number three. Um, you've already seen the variant cover done by Marcus the Visual. You know, Marcus is an amazing artist. If you're into comic books, you know Marcus. He's one of the co-creators of Tuskegee Airs. Um, he's been working on a bunch of different projects for Marvel and DC. He just currently did a cover for Static, um, for Milestone. So to have Marcus work on this was also a, a privilege and something that we really um, wanted to have. And you've seen the results of it. We've been posting it on online and stuff like that. And then, you know, so having all this in together, coming together on this project has been exciting. And we want to continue. Um, the more we raise, the more we can do with this project, the more we can invest in the new projects. Um, there's a particular thing that we got going on right now that I can't really talk about um, because it's in its infant stage. Um, but getting this Kickstarter to the highest level possible will support that process. And I can, I can guarantee you that when you see it, it's something that you're really going to enjoy. So, hey, uh, once again, thank you so much for supporting us. Um, thank you for continuing to support us. Um, again, if you have friends, relatives, people that you feel like will be in interested in this project, please steer them my way. Um, I put the um, link to the Kickstarter page in our description. I'm going to put it be just a minute here. I'm going to put it into um, in our comment, se comment section as well. So you and they won't have any problem at all finding it. There we go right there. And again, I'll say it one more time. Thank you so much for supporting us. Um, thank you for continuing to support us. Um, keep an eye on what's going on with the uh, Kickstarter. Um, um, we might have a, some new things to show you. Um, we got some great rewards. We got the books. We've got clothing. <laughs> We've got uh, some great add-ons. So, hey, let's keep this thing going. Y'all take care. Peace.